And so finally, the big main event, everybody, is Blood and Guts, the Inner Circle versus Pinnacle. And it opened up with Sammy and Dax Harwood. And they go for five minutes, and they're doing all these spots. They, and sh- they, sh- they shaved a lot of time, by the way. It Dax wasn't. is busted open. He's bleeding all over the place. It was actually about, was actually about four minutes. That's probably because that Kenny Omega segment went too long. Could be. I mean, I was just watching that thing going, dude, how much time do we have to kill before this cage match here? So then uh, Sean Spears is in next with a chair, and Dax at this point is bleeding all over the place, and Spears hits Sammy with his big chair shot. I think it was mostly to the shoulder, but there were some chair shots in this match that, especially one that Sammy gave Wardlow, that one looked fucking brutal. But the camera angles, I couldn't tell if they actually hit him or not, so hopefully it was an illusion. We had Ortiz in next. Place goes crazy for Ortiz. They're going nuts. And if you haven't figured this out already, everybody, if you book War Games right, it's the easiest match in the world to get a reaction from. The baby faces, it's one-on-one, then a heel comes in. Then a baby face comes in, the place goes crazy. Then the heels come in and they, they beat up the baby. Then another, it's, it's exactly what happened in this match. Every time a baby face got in the cage, the place just goes crazy. Cash Wheeler's in next. He's going nuts, beating up everybody. Santana comes in, another huge pop. Wardlow comes in. This one, however, was during a commercial break, so we didn't see anything that Wardlow did. They come back, and Swagger comes in, and he starts brawling with uh, Wardlow. They're punching each other. MGF is the final Pinnacle member, and then, of course, Jericho is the final Inner Circle member. So once everybody's in, it is submit or surrender rules. And, uh, you know, the biggest complaint that I saw, there were two complaints I saw from fans about this match. One of them was, uh, we'll get to it, the uh, bump by Jericho. And uh, the other one was the number of commercial breaks. And commercial breaks is out of their control. It is. It is out of their control. It's TV. It, it, it did, they did a 30-minute match on television. You're going to have you're going to have commercial breaks. It's just, you are going to have commercial breaks, but... I mean, one of the can, problems with the commercial breaks is at least one of these commercial breaks, they said you can follow us along with picture in picture, and then and it wasn't. Yeah. Then, yeah, yeah. And yeah. so I had no idea what happened. And then the other thing is, I understand having commercials, but there should be a way to structure your match where the commercial is at a point that is not that important. And unfortunately, the final commercial break, during the break... MJF and Jericho get out of the cage. Yep. And there's this little tiny little window, and there's like somebody dressed entirely in white who appears to have let them out of the cage. I have no idea who this person is. That was, that was Tully. Was it Tully? So Tully Tully got the key to the cage from the, the, the remember at the beginning? This of the is time? all picture in picture. Right. Okay. And 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 you know, okay, okay. So so at the beginning of the thing, it's actually done set up perfectly. The only people have cages are the, the keys to the cage are the two referees. Tully attacks the referee because there's no DQ, gets the key. So he's the guy in the white, and he gives the key to MJF. MJF gets out, or he unlocks the door and lets get. And MJF goes out and then climbs to the roof. So, so that's what that was about. But absolutely, 100, percent you're right that that you know that should have been uh, not during the commercial. That's like one of the most important keys of the match that yep, like, we could absolutely. barely see. So they come back, and Jericho and MJF are on top of the cage. And MJF is trying to submit him with his salt of the earth, and Jericho's refusing to submit. So MJF stomps his hand, he puts him back in, and Jericho won't quit. And so finally, MJF, he gets the diamond ring, and he puts it on his finger. MJF, by the way, is bleeding all over the place. And he punches Jericho with the ring, and now Jericho's bleeding all over. And so MJF grabs him, and he drags him to the edge of the cage, and he screams down to the cage, he goes... I'm going to throw him off this cage unless you guys surrender. And the baby faces are looking up, and they know what to do, and MJF's about to throw him off the cage, and finally Sammy goes, all right, I surrender. And so he surrenders, and the inner circle loses the match, and the fans are booing, and they're all upset, and the match is over, and then MJF grabs Jericho anyway, and he throws him off the top of the cage, and Jericho crashes through the, uh, the ramp or whatever, and he's left for dead. And the show goes off the air with MJF, and he's got blood all over his face, and he's celebrating, and these doctors are surrounding Jericho. And the thing was, these fans are all complaining 
that Jericho fell off the cage and like he fell into a crash pad. Well, good. and it's like, well, what the hell do you want the guy to do? Like, good. That's what you know, right. look. 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 Okay. Okay. Look. On, on the flip side, I get the complaint in the sense of. You know, you watch that in WWE, you know, you watch that in WWE and like, you know, it's what it is. OK. And you as an AEW fan, but they've done this and they've done crash pad stuff in AEW before. I guess that's what it is in the sense of when you know it's a crash pad, it's not as much fun or or it's 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 what it is. But yeah, if he's going to take the bump, please, 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 please have a crash pad there. Okay. Dude, we saw I Matt guess. Hardy fall off a ladder on the cement and almost kill himself. And, like, it was, like, this big scandal because they ended up letting the match continue and everything like that. But, like, the point of this is, like, I don't want to see dudes falling off ladders onto cement. Like, they had a story they wanted to tell, which was that the inner circle surrendered to save Chris Jericho. And this... Right. Son of a bitch, or what did uh, Tony Schiavone call him? This piece of shit, this piece of shit MJF throws a dude off the cell anyway, and now he's dead, and God only knows when we'll see Chris Jericho again. That's the story you wanted to tell. If you're going to tell that story, the guy's got to, like, don't kill Chris Jericho. I mean, there's got to be a crash pad. If you want to complain that they could have gotten a different angle where you couldn't see so much that it was a crash pad, that's fine. But I don't want to see people complaining that the guy landed on a crash pad well, I don't, I don't that they wanna... safely did a stunt. Okay, okay. Here, here's the thing. Okay, if this goes nowhere, and I know it's not, but if this were to go nowhere and he does this bump for the sake of doing a bump that means nothing, which he wouldn't even do, but let's just say I would go like, okay, gratuitous bump. You know, okay, you know, I mean, it's to get heat on MJF. I get that, right? But I'm pretty sure that this bump is leading to something on the next pay per view or, or shortly thereafter that's going to be a real big match in some shape or form. So at that point, it's like, yeah, of course we know it's a crash pad, but we're doing an angle, and you know, it's it's a safe angle. So if if the angle has nothing to do with that. Um, or the match has nothing to do with that, and they don't go in that direction, then I would agree. But if they're going in something that revolves around this, um, yeah, if he's going to take the bump off the cage, you know, I don't care who it is, make it safe. Well, Absolutely. he didn't. He didn't say what he's going to do or anything like that. But I mean, Jericho said it on our show that he's got this thing planned out for a long time, and I don't think it's planned. Is to take a bump off the cell and crash through the thing, and then like be on dynamite next week. Like, clearly, there's a storyline oh, no, no, here. He absolutely shouldn't be on dynamite until. Uh... The thing is, though, is okay. So, so next week's the twelfth. I mean, you really want the pay per view, especially because the twenty, the the the, the or yeah, not the tw yeah the the twelfth. So then you get the ninth because. The 26th, you don't have a show. It's going to air on the 28th on a Friday night, so a lot of the regular viewers aren't going to be watching. So you really want that pay-per-view and all the pay-per-view big matches to be announced on the 19th. So Jericho should not be on the show this week, okay, this coming week. Um, I mean, could he do an interview at home um, vowing revenge? Yes, I think so. But I do think on the 19th, I, you know, I, they, I don't think that you save that an, that that angle, his comeback angle for the twenty eighth, two days before the pay per view. I think it's got to run on the nineteenth, which may explain why they had to do this match on Cinco de Mayo, because if they did it next week, then he's going to come back. You remember that whole thing? He, he do this big angle that you're planning, and then he's going to be back on the. He's going to have to be back on the show the very next week. So that you know that may explain the you know what the date of the uh, you know doing this blood and guts on Cinco de Mayo. I, I thought I thought that um, this was a very different war games than the NXT version, um, and the NXT the the last NXT war games I thought was great, and I thought this match was very different. You know, obviously way more bloody, but I thought as far as you know, they did commercial, they did warnings twice during the show, you know, that they never do. You know, as far as like uh, this, well, I forget what it was, but it was you know that this is going to be extreme violence. So they told you ahead of time, um, but it had to be what it had to be. Um, and like, I'm not a fav I'm not in favor of tons of blood on TV, but in this match, absolutely. Like, yeah, you had, you, 
if in this in the world of wrestling that these guys are doing, which is kind of a throwback to the old the, the old school wrestling and kind of a you know the the future and the present. Um, war games in that realm of what they do, it's got to be, it's got to have a lot of blood, and it did. Which is yeah. funny because when we when we interviewed Jericho and I asked about like you know are there any restrictions or whatever on TNT, I mean he didn't say that like nobody was going to bleed, but I mean the way he answered it, it was almost downplaying it like. You know, people well, are, you know, it's called gonna, blood and guts, and there's going to be, you know, we're going to do a bunch of stuff, but, like, I don't want people to think that, like, it'd be intestines hanging, and there were not intestines hanging out. There were no intestines. But, I mean, there was way more blood than I expected. Virtually everybody in this match bled. No, he, he said, he said, it's not going to be ten men bleeding. It was, um, Dax. It was, like, eight. <laughs> there was a lot of blood in this Dax match. Dax, Jericho, um, Dax, Cash, Jericho, and MJF, did, did anybody else bleed? It, it feels like more people bled. I mean, Wardlow didn't. Um, Hager didn't. Hager didn't. I'm not even sure about uh, Sammy and... Uh, Sammy didn't. I feel like Sammy did. Did he not? I guess maybe it was only four guys. It certainly yeah. felt like way more of a bloodbath. Well, that's because freaking Cash Wheeler was bleeding like crazy. Well, yeah, I mean, you know what that might have been is because Cash had blood. He was bleeding all over everybody else. So, like, yeah. everybody was covered in blood. They may not have necessarily been bleeding themselves, but uh, Dax made sure that this was a bloodbath. This was this was a bloody match. It was yeah. a very bloody match. I mean, it was a match that I felt like is going to do a huge number. A because it went so long, and B because it was just like such a violent, bloody match. I guess I mean we'll, we'll find out tomorrow. But I mean, it could be hurt by it could be hurt by Cinco de Mayo. But I will say this: I'm going to guess that even if it's hurt a little bit by Cinco de Mayo, that the um, the uh, Replay or the DVD, DV, DVR numbers will be huge because last week that was hurt by the speech. The DVR number was was huge. It was actually, um, you know, I remember on Monday I said fifty nine percent. Well, since we had two days since Monday, it was actually when all was said and done, the of all the people that watched that show, only fifty seven percent watched it live last Wednesday show, which is you know much lower than usual. Because so it's not like you know people were doing the sky is falling and yeah I mean we all knew why it was down okay it wasn't a secret but the sky in fact was not falling um, and it's and if the number is like a million viewers this week if which probably won't it'll probably be higher but if it is the sky still isn't probably falling or or at least wait a week to say the sky is falling don't don't jump to the conclusion but I'm, I mean. Based on what I've seen and heard and and um, everything, I mean, my gut is is this did a real big is is going to do a real big number. But but there is you know that is the age group and it's you know Cinco de Mayo is not I don't know how big it is like nationally because when I was a kid growing up in New York I never even heard of it and then when I moved here it was gigantic so it's a regional thing but it is big in certain parts of the country. All right, on that note, everybody, we are totally out of time. We will be back tomorrow with Observer Live. We've got a lot of shows coming up. New uh, Observers coming out on uh, Thursday night as well. Back issue of the Observers up on Tuesday. Lots of shows. Check them out, everybody. That's it. We will talk to you again after a while. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week, you can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts, and also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com, 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.